Happy Saturday, everyone. I am coming to you from my sewing room for what should have been a Friday sews. I have been doing those pretty consistently and I really enjoy doing just sort of that catch up, conversational type video. I just hadn't had a chance to get one out recently. I did put out a video yesterday of my latest make, so make sure you go check that out. I thought since Fridays probably won't always work for me that we would do Saturday sewing room updates. So that's what we're gonna do today. I wanna share with you all of my latest additions to the sewing room, new fabrics, new sewing patterns, show you my current project, and hopefully get some advice or some guidance from you guys on what my next project should be, what patterns you would like to see me work with sooner than later, and or what fabrics. So I'm just gonna get right into it. There's a lot to catch up on. If you like this type of sewing content, then please feel free to subscribe. If you wanna support the channel, then give this video a thumbs up or share it with a friend. Now let's just get straight into it. I know I normally start with sewing patterns, but I wanna start with fabrics today because I'm so excited about some of the fabric things that I have going on. Here's the latest fabrics. I have to start here. So, Mood Fabrics is selling dead stock, authentic Balenciaga fabric, and I just had to get some. If you don't know, so Balenciaga is a super high-end designer with really expensive clothes that I probably wouldn't even buy if I could afford. I don't want to spend that much on a dress. I have two kids, so I thought I could afford to buy a few yards of their dead stock fabric and make myself a Balenciaga dress. So I have three yards of this. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it. If you think it will work with any of the patterns that I'm going to show you today, then please feel free to share that information because I'm super clueless of what I want to do with it, but I think I want to use the Balenciaga to make my birthday dress. So that's that one. And then I'm starting to have fall on the brain already. So I picked up some mustard linen from Mood. And I think I have, so I have two yards of this. And then I bought this that I thought would be a very complimentary fabric. And I'm hoping to maybe do like a skirt and a blouse or some trousers and a top, like dress and a jacket. I don't know what I wanna do with these, but I think they look really good together. So let me know what you think and we can figure out where we're gonna go with this. Next, I have some cotton that I got from Hobby Lobby. I got a really, really good deal on it and it was the end of the bolt and that's why it's in two cuts. Um, but I'm hoping to be able to do something for Major and I matching before summer's over because this looks like just a really summer fabric. But if not, we will stick it in the stash and use it sometime before she doesn't wanna wear clothes I make. And then I got some eyelet. I really, really, really like eyelet. I've never worked with it before. I've also never worked with anything with like the scalloped edge. So I'm excited about possibly making a skirt or something where I can really utilize this edge. So let me know what you think of that. And then lastly, our last fabric, I picked this up a couple days ago from Joanne. They were having a really good sale. Um, I think I got six or seven yards of this because I think I want to make like one of those picnic dresses with puffy sleeves and a long flowing skirt and all of those things. And so I thought this would just be a good fit for that. And then it was such a good price. I believe I paid a total of $20 for the seven yards. So that's it for fabrics. Oh, we can go into current projects. Well, past project. The project I just finished that I uploaded yesterday, if you haven't seen it, is M7599. And it's this really cute McCall's pattern a vintage reproduction. It was very easy to follow and just a super cute, easy dress. I did a mock-up. I know you're proud. It went well along with the full bust adjustment. And so I actually completed the mock-up and did the dress using the fabric that I wanted to use that I picked up on my fabric shopping trip in Michigan. I will link that video if you haven't seen it. But yes, check this out because this is a very beginner-friendly sewing project if you want a 1950s vibe. Okay, current projects. So I posted it over on my Instagram, that's so, so Drew, a couple of weeks ago because I've been, it's been slow progress with this, but it's a 1950s, here it is. So it's a 1950s Butterick pattern and I did the slim skirt because I hardly ever do slim skirts. I love the 50s look of the big poofy skirt, but I just really wanted to start trying different silhouettes on me to see what it is that I really like or what really looks good on me. So I did the slim version. It has buttons all down the back, which is super cute. I use this fabric 
that I was supposed to use for my dress to wear to my brother's wedding and I chickened out and ended up wearing a store-bought dress but yeah use this fabric it's almost completed I just need to do the blouse that goes under it it's like a three-quarter length sleeve blouse with like kind of puffy sleeves super cute and so that video should be coming soon i want to go through the vintage reproduction patterns now that i've picked up and i want you guys to pay attention to these and when you're looking at them think about that balenciaga fabric that i showed you that i want to use for my birthday and let me know what pattern you think would be most suitable for that i'll show it to you again and remember it has this silky feel I don't even know what you call this, but it's very silky and I only have three yards of it. So going into the vintage reproduction, they're all Buttericks. They were $1.99 at Joanne, so I grabbed a few of them. So the first one is Butterick 5209. I love this dress because I don't really like halters. I really prefer to have sleeves all the time for some reason, even if they're short sleeves. And I really prefer three quarter length sleeves. But this dress is a reprint from 1947 and it's a halter but version B is the one I want to do has like a little cap sleeve so I really like that that you're getting the feel and the look of the halter but still having sleeves and that like gathering at the bust like I think that is so flattering and I really love this it's Butterick B5209 1947 reprint the next one is Butterick 6318 it's a retro from 1961. I love the look of this in the stripe. I love how they've done it here with the line art where it's vertical for the dress and then horizontal across the waist. I think that is so cute, so pick that up. The next one is Butterick 6212, and it looks very similar to the walkaway dress, but I like how it's open in the back. So I just picked it up. I thought at some point we'll give this one a shot. The next one is actually the walkaway dress. I bought this just because of all of the legend surrounding it. And I really wanted to give it a try for myself regardless if it comes out good or not. So it is Butterick B4790, the infamous walkaway dress, which we will try at some point. Next we have Butterick 6485. It's a retro reprint from 1944 and has that gathering at the shoulders that I really like. This is what I really love about the 1940s is how they just really prioritize the little details since they couldn't get away with using too much fabric or too many buttons or there was so much rules and, and stipulations to what a garment could contain. And so they just had to get creative in the 40s and I love the look. I am starting to notice like when I have patterns purchased all around the same time that they all tend to take on like a certain theme I guess of whatever I was into at that time, it really shows um, in the similarities of the patterns that I purchased at that time. So this is Butterick 6485. I think it's really, really, really cute. Really cute. And the last one is Butterick 6682. It's a retro from 1952, and it is a halter dress like the other one. Um, this one doesn't have sleeves, but it does come with a really cute bolero jacket pattern. So. That's it for the Butterick. Next I have the authentic vintage patterns that I've gotten over the past couple weeks. This first one is Advance 8134. And it's just like a very simple jumper dress, but there's this added detail of, I'm guessing fabric or ribbon or whatever, thread it through it. And that just gives it that something special. The There is no blouse pattern in here. It's just the jumper dress, but the detail of those pockets and that um, fabric, threaded through the waist, and the fact that it has no waist seam, I keep saying I wanna give one of these dresses a try just to see if they're flattering on me. So, Advance 8134 from the 1950s. Then we have a Simplicity from the 1940s. Once again, you see that gathering detail at the shoulder. Clearly, that's what I'm into right now, and it has really cute pockets. Then we have Butterick 5603, which is just a skirt pattern, but I don't really have enough skirts in my wardrobe so i plan to make this very soon and see if it fits me well and then just make a couple like have a week where i just make me a bunch of skirts um for my fall wardrobe so butterick 5603 
It's a vintage skirt pattern. And then I picked up this Simplicity 6593 from eBay for like $2. It's a pajama pattern. And then I actually picked up some sheets from Target because I know you've seen on YouTube like all of the different dresses and garments made out of sheets. I think it's a really cool idea that I would like to give a try. I see a lot of dresses made out of the sheets, like even evening gowns, but I thought how cool would it be to make what you wear to sleep out of what you sleep on. So that was a thought I had. And then the last one is Simplicity 2602. It's a simple sheath dress. Also, it doesn't have a waist seam, just those darts, but it comes with a pattern for an overskirt. And so got that for a really good deal off eBay. So I picked that up. So that's it for the authentic vintage sewing patterns that have arrived. I did get two new um, vintage reproductions from Lady Marlowe. If you've been a follower of this channel for any amount of time, you do know that I love Lady Marlowe's patterns in that thick paper that she prints them on. So one of them is Advanced 6893, and it's for two blouses, one with short sleeves and one with three quarter length sleeves. Would love to give this a shot one day, really soon, to add some blouses to the wardrobe to go with those skirts, hopefully. And then the next one is this super fancy 1940s evening gown. It is so adorable. Look at that train, the gathering at the bust. I think this is just so beautiful. I wish I had enough of the Balenciaga to do this with it, but I just don't. For 39 inch material, they're saying I'm gonna need like nine yards. So don't have enough, but this is really cute. And then you guys know I have a thing for making evening gowns out of quilting cotton. So that could be a thing. And also I have plenty of pink buttons. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby and these I got from Mood. I thought I was gonna need them for the dress that I'm currently working on, but I ended up just covering my own. So now I have plenty of pink buttons in the stash. Lastly, we have just some of the patterns that I had talked about in like the Let's Take a Look at Vogue's new line and McCall's new line, and I picked those up. So this one actually, this blouse pattern is from McCall's summer line that just came out a few days ago. Um, I think when I reviewed their spring line, I had put it as summer because it was summer. I just wasn't even thinking that their summer patterns were gonna be released so late into the year. But yes, this is from the actual summer collection. And I just thought it was a really cute blouse and how it ties and I just thought it was super cute. So got that one. That's the only one I've gotten so far from the new line. And then I got the Vogue R11482. I told you guys how much I loved this dress pattern. Next is Vogue V1884. And I'm thinking that this might really work for that Balenciaga fabric. Let me know what you think. And then I like that this pattern is a custom fit for the different cup sizes. And this looks like a birthday dress. And in version B, it kind of looks like similar feel to the fabric maybe more like a taffeta i want to say that that is i don't know but yeah really really like that one this vogue isn't a new one but i just thought it was a super cute blouse i think i got this one when they were having the sale so i thought why not and then i got a new look which i don't even think i have many of these but i thought this was super cute i don't know if i could use this for with the balenciaga fabric let me know what you think. This looks more like a linen here. And the suggested fabrics are batiks and cotton blends and poplins. So I probably don't have enough anyway. No, just the skirt itself takes three yards. So, but it's super cute. And then I got a Butterick for Major, hoping to use um, that cloud like fabric. Uh, and make me and her something matching. So that is it, you guys. That is. All of the new sewing patterns, all of the new fabrics, the authentic vintage, the vintage reproduction, the modern, that is everything. I showed you my current project. Stay tuned for that video to be coming really, really soon. 
please let me know what you would like to see me tackle next or what fabrics you would like to see me use or even if it wasn't shown here and just an idea you have that could help me as far as birthday dress or upcoming fall things or whatever or even techniques you would like to see me try i really appreciate you for being here i hope you really enjoy this saturday sewing room update and enjoy your saturday as well and i will see you in my next video that is soon and sure to come